Our first caller is Seth from North Carolina. Hey, Seth, how can we help you? Hey, guys, what's up? Um, I have been weight training for about two years now, and I've, I've definitely uh, put on a good foundational physique and uh, built a quite a bit of muscle in that time. Uh, but in the past like six months or so, I've started rock climbing a whole lot. Um, and what I'm trying to figure out is how I can supplement the rock climbing to continue like pushing my performance to the next level with like strength and physique. But also like a lot of the guys in my gym are very, very skinny. Um, and I am, I am not that I'm a little more on the, the broad shoulder stocky side. Uh, and I didn't know if you guys had trained rock climbers before, if you knew sort of some things that could help like supplement that training. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I've trained, uh, I trained two rock climbers in the past. Now here's the deal with strength, right? So you can, we can categorize strength a few different ways. One way is to, to categorize it as absolute strength, meaning the total amount of weight that you can lift. Like I can squat 300 pounds and then, you know, if I train real hard and I can squat 400 pounds, my absolute strength has improved. Then there's relative strength and it's in, in relative strength is much more applicable to rock climbing. And this is the strength that you have in relation to your body weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just say for, for argument's sake, you were able to maintain your current level of strength. You didn't go down at all but you lost 30 pounds on the scale, you'd be much stronger, relatively speaking, to your body weight, and that would make you a much better rock climber. So this is why when you look at uh, really, really good rock climbers, they tend to be kind of skinny, super lean, wiry, lean-looking people. It's because they're strong, but they're also very light. They have a lot of relative strength. Then, of course, there's the obvious stuff, which is a lot of grip strength, you also want you want to have really really good shoulder, hip, and ankle mobility. Um, your shoulder mobility is obvious. Obviously, you're reaching above your head and you have to hang and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You also want to have really good hip and ankle mobility because the feet and the and you know when you're kicking your leg up, you want to get up to a really really high you know foothold or whatever. Really good mobility is going to help. So what does this mean for your workouts? Well, it means. Being big and muscular is going to be a, a disadvantage. Uh, you want to be limber, strong, and light. And so that's the way you're going to want to you know, uh, model your training. Seth, do you have uh, MAPS OCR? Uh, I do not. Okay, so I think, uh, Doug, you're going to have to hook him up with that because I think this is what's this is the perfect program for what you're trying to accomplish. And okay. Where, and OCR obviously is, is geared towards obstacle course racing, but it's a lot of the attributes that you want as a rock climber are going to fit perfectly in there. And the only thing I would tell you is uh, if you don't care about the running, because there's a little bit, there's quite a bit of running that's inside that program, I would just supplement that out for my rock climbing yeah. and do your do that okay. instead. And those that program should be perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on grip strength and their enhanced strength, which is like unlike the other programs specifically. But, you know, one other uh, case that I was going to present that uh, was more around like Prime, Prime Pro uh, driven just because of what Sal mentioned in terms of, you know, mobility. But like if you've ever done any kind of kin stretch where you've put heavy emphasis on isometric tension uh, in these positions where, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be more advantageous to you to be able to connect even further down from your fingers to your toes and have uh, be able to, you know, stretch that capacity, how much force you can generate in positions. And, uh, you know, some, yeah. some of those moves in, in Prime Pro are, are fantastic for that. So that's something that I would consider as well. Yeah. And, and Seth, I have another question for you. Uh, what is more important to you? Is it uh, to look muscular and aesthetic, uh, you know, kind of like more like a physique? competitor would look you can go or, ahead and say me you or were say yeah. me right? i can see you <laughs> right right <laughs> kind of like side eye yeah, 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 yeah. yeah or yeah, or okay. are or is it more important to you that you do really well at rock climbing um i would say that it's it's more important to me that i like maintain a just a nice physique it doesn't have to be like big and muscular like um muscular like physique competitor wise so i i'd say the performance and getting better at rock climbing is more important Okay, so if, if rock climbing is more important to you, um, then I would definitely focus on less on building mass, especially in the lower body, and more on building that kind of relative strength and strength uh, endurance. For the lower body, I tell you what, your split stance and single leg exercises are your best friend. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, gotcha. we talk about barbell squats all the time and how awesome they are. Uh, but this is a case where I could easily make a case that you know single leg step ups and lunges and single leg deadlifts are probably going to be more, you're going to get more carry over to rock climbing than you would with a, a barbell squat. Cool. 
All right. Awesome. All right, man. Thank you, you, Seth. All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, that's a that's a hard uh, trade off for people sometimes, right? It's like they want to look a particular way, but yeah. then their sport requires them to look a different way. So it's like, what do I do? Yeah, there's a point where it kind of inhibits like what you're trying to do with your sport. So you have to kind of balance that and see, you know, what is the priority there. Well, yes. and if you're doing running, rock climbing, you're doing a lot of cardiovascular things. It's inevitable that you're probably going to lose some weight and lean out, which a lot of times you'll lose a little bit of strength. I mean, we were just talking about this morning off air. Um, I was saying how I needed to lean out the last week and a half or so I've dropped about five pounds. Of course, a lot of that's water weight, but I dropped five, six pounds and went, came back to incline dumbbell press today. And I struggled with the weight that I moved relatively easy just a week and a half ago. And it, I, what you have to understand is you can't freak out. You can't go like, Oh my God, I'm getting weaker mm-hmm. week over week. It's I'm leaning out. And to back to your point, Sal, like it's all relative to my body weight. So technically I'm as strong or stronger because I'm a smaller person this week than I was the yeah. week before. I ran into this when I was uh, grappling a lot, when I did judo or jujitsu, it's like, uh, I'm going to get big and strong in the gym. And then I move up in a weight class. Now I'm wicked. <laughs> now I'm yeah. against guys that are, yeah. you know, bigger and stronger and many of them bigger and stronger and easy in that weight class. Whereas I'd have to push my body yeah, they've weight. lived in that weight exactly so and this is how it is for a lot of different sports especially ones. now some sports relative uh, strength is is important but not as important as overall strength i mean if you're a lineman uh and you're playing football your body weight is also important you're a big strong dude mm. uh you don't want to be a smaller relatively strong dude you want to yeah. be a big absolute strong guy right. when you're on the line so it depends a lot on on what you want to do